it's Morgan Brown again working with Artemis Sportswoman to bring you guys a follow along how to draw and paint different fish species. Remember to join Artemis and find more information about them at artemis.nwf.org. Today I will be walking you through how to draw a cutthroat trout. You can see here what that final product is going to look like. I am using a cardstock to draw on, a pencil, paintbrush, micron pen, scratch paper, and watercolor. So you can get those similar objects and then let's get started. Start off with the mouth and nose area with a small C shape. This will be the front of that top jaw. I then create a long sweeping arch that will be the trout's back leaving a space at the end for where the tail will be. Halfway down that line that I just drew will be where you begin the dorsal fin. Bring that line diagonally out like you're creating a triangle. Complete the triangle. Now halfway between the back of the dorsal fin and where the back line ends is where you will draw the adipose fin. This will be created by drawing a sideways J shape. For the upper jaw, come out of the bottom of the C on the nose area and draw that line down diagonally. Bring this decently far because it's going to extend past where the eye sits on a cutthroat trout. Loop that back up towards where you started to create an elongated teardrop shape. For the bottom jaw, create another C shape directly below where you drew that first one. Curve that slightly and connect it to the upper jaw. For the bottom of the bottom jaw, continue to arch that down and now for the eye, start right behind where the top jaw loops back together and draw a slightly downward arcing line. Then draw a circle right above that that looks like it dips slightly behind that line. For the interior of the eye, inside that circle, draw a sideways teardrop shape with the point facing forward. For the front gill cover, start at the tip of where the upper jaw ends and slightly curve a line upwards. Then go slightly above where the eye sit and now bring that line back down to where you came out of the jaw forming a slight J shape. Create a hard line along that bottom jaw. This is going to represent where you'll see that strong slash in color that the cutthroat is known for. For the back gill cover, you want to extend that bottom line back to right below where that front gill cover ends. And then when you get below that, you'll want to kink that line upwards. Then go back and slightly above where that top gill cover ends at the top, and then create a elongated backwards C shape to join those together to create that backwards gill cover. Then add some squiggly lines along the gill covers for some detail since they will have color there. From the bottom of the back gill cover, bring a line outwards to begin the belly line. I go out slightly and then stop because this is where we're going to draw the pectoral fin. The pectoral fin will be a triangle shape, so extend that triangle shape down and complete that triangle. I then have that back fin peek through from the other side by just drawing a slight triangle shape along the front of the pectoral fin that you see. Continue the belly, bring that back angling slightly upwards until you are under the middle of the adipose fin. Then we'll draw the pelvic fin. For this, go to the middle of the dorsal fin and straight down, and you'll create a similar triangle shape as you did for the pectoral fin. When you go to where you extended that belly line and, and kink that line upwards and now have it arch to create the anal fin, you bring a diagonal line out of where you started that kink. You'll want to then create another small diagonal line coming out of the body where the line starts to level out that you just drew. Then you'll bring those two together to form your anal fin. For the tail where I ended the back and the belly line, I'm going to create a backwards C shape to show where the tail and the body meet. For the tail itself, I create mirrored angled lines coming up about as high as where that dorsal fin sits. Bring those together with a slight dip and then add rays throughout the tail, the dorsal fin, the pectoral fin, the pelvic fin, and the anal fin. Not along that adipose fin though. 
Now from midway down the back gill cover, draw a loose line creating that lateral line down the center of the fish to the center of the tail. Spots on a cutthroat trout are small and black and they start at the head of the trout and will continue all the way back onto the tail. Unlike a brown trout, the spots on cutthroat trout do not have halos around them and they are just singular small black spots. They will have spots along their dorsal fin often and when I do this I have it follow along the rays that I drew. The spots on a cutthroat trout can drop far below the lateral line, so I'm going to create it to where it's a little bit light, lighter spotted at the front, but then as you move back towards the back end of the fish and the tail, it gets heavily spotted. Cutthroat trout do not typically have spots along those bottom fins, so I'm going to leave spots off of there. Then I'm just going to quickly add some loose lines around the belly area and around the lateral line to show where when I add coloration, there will be some color transition. So if you have coloration in different spots, if you're going to draw a different color trout, add those lines around where you see coloration. And now you have that initial pencil sketch of a cutthroat trout, and you can stop here if you would like. I am going to go back through over the initial sketch with pen. I am using a size 08 micron pen. I'm going to go back through and go over all of the lines to clean this up and create a clean ink sketch that I can then put watercolor over. So when just go back over all the lines that you drew. When I get back to the dorsal fin and the adipose fin, I will leave a space where the dorsal fin and the back join together as well as on that adipose fin. And then I also make sure to make the edge of the fin jagged. And I'm going to make sure to create that jagged edge along the dorsal fin, the pectoral fin, the pelvic fin, and the tail fin, and slightly along the anal fin as well.
When you're drawing your cutthroat trout, you can change up the spots, like I said, with if you were changing coloration. There are many different species and subspecies of cutthroat trout that will all have slightly different coloration and spot patterns. These are typically going to be most easily identified through knowing the area that you are fishing and what species lives in those different areas. Some states like Wyoming have slams and specific they have the cut slam which is where you can get a certificate for catching all of the state's native fish in their historic drainages. So I believe there are four different species of cutthroat and so I believe that there are four different species of cutthroat trout in Wyoming that if you catch them all within a year you complete that cut slam. interested in something like this make sure to just google cut slams or slams for different states and they'll show you all the rules and regulations on how to participate So once you've gone over all those pencil lines with pen, you'll now have your clean ink drawing of a cutthroat trout. This is where I'm going to go back through and erase all of the pencil lines that are left to clean it up and get it ready for watercolor. You can use watercolor, colored pencil, crayon, marker, or anything else you can really think of or that you have on hand to add color to your trout drawing slash painting. So cutthroat trout bodies are typically a gold and silvery tone. They'll have that recognizable red slash along the bottom of their jaw as well as can have red markings on their gill covers. The bottom side of the fish as well as their fins can take on a very orange to orangey red color. And remember the spots on cutthroat trout do not have halos like you will see on a brown trout. So I'm going to mix up a gold and silver color by adding some blue to a deeper yellow that I have. And then I'm going to bring this along the body of the fish. I'm going to leave it off of the gill covers so that the red color marks that I will add there stand out more clearly.
I'm going to bring that gold color back along the body as well and up onto the dorsal fin, the adipose fin, and the tail fins, but not have it along the anal, pelvic, or pectoral fins. So those are those bottom fins. I'm going to have this be a very colored out cutthroat, so I'm going to leave that color slightly off the belly as well. Next, I'm going to take a little bit more of a pure gold, pure yellow look for the eye of the fish, as well as just adding that a little bit along the back to add some color depth to the fish and give it more dimension. I'm then going to add a little bit of blue to that color as well to darken some things up again and create a darker shade than before and add it along the very spine of the fish as well as along the tail fin to kind of create that rounded curved look that trout obviously have. For the slash along the jaw, I'm going to bring a prominent red, red, and I'm just going to loosely do that along that line that we drew to represent where that's going to go. I am then going to use that same color loosely, a little bit diluted, in pigment along the gill covers. I'm going to keep this a little bit lighter version of that red color for now, that way I can go in with darker spots to create some dimension in the coloring. I'm going to bring that same color along the belly and down onto those bottom fins as well. Like we talked about, those fins can get a very orangey red color. And then I'm going to bring that slightly a little bit along the lateral line as well. I'm then going to take a more concentrated version of that red and again just loosely kind of dot that along the gill covers and the belly. I'm not being really careful about this. I just want to kind of show how that color can spread and be deeper in some spots. And when you look at cutthroat trout, you can kind of see how that their coloration can be a very wide range of tones.
I'm just doing this until I'm personally happy with how the coloration looks and so you can add as much variation to the color as you would like as you're doing this. I thought the back of the fish was looking a little flat in comparison to the bottom of the fish after adding all the color detail into the red. So I took a gold color and added it to the back with some lines to add detail. And that brought it together and that is my cutthroat trout. So just a recap on the cutthroat as a species, they'll have that upper jaw that will extend slightly past where that eye sits. They have small singular black spots that start around the head and will continue back along the body that do not have halos around them. They have a very distinctive red slash along the bottom jaw and they can also have red markings on their gill covers. Their fins and lower belly can also have a very orangey red color. And their body will typically be a golden silvery color. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed watching and will give it a try yourself. Please remember if you guys do give this a try and want to draw a cutthroat trout, just post a picture, send it to Artemis and tag hashtag Artemis Sportswoman and tag their accounts that way they can see your drawings and always remember to join them and find out more information about their awesome organization at artemis.nwf.org